good morning. It is Tuesday, I think. Yes, Tuesday. Uh, day after Halloween, that means it is November 1st. And um, that means we're going to be kicking off a new uh, custom built decor challenge, a CBDC. And um, so, pretty excited about that. We had a, a incredibly awesome turnout for last month's uh, challenge. Um, some uh, absolutely wonderful um, projects submitted by um, our builders out there and uh, very proud of you guys and uh, truly appreciative that you participated as heavily as you did. Um, hoping that this one will be uh, similarly uh, uh, taken in with as much enthusiasm as uh, as past challenges. Um, but before we get to that, I just want to remind folks um, a, a few things. Um, firstly, uh, we did a little bit of work on my computer yesterday. My husband did a backup, which apparently took a little bit longer than he anticipated. So that's basically all we did yesterday was uh, perform a backup so that if something goes wonky during the process of changing over some of the hardware that not everything will be completely lost so um, today is when he's actually going to gut everything out and replace it with some new parts so uh, just be aware um, if for whatever reason i end up having to cancel either tomorrow's uh, tours or um, you know whatever if we end up having to take it into the shop uh, just be aware that's the issue um, basically, um, I've been having problems not only with my screen um, acting up, which we fixed by purchasing a new one, um, but I've been having issues ever since the latest uh, Windows update. My hard drive has been making weird clicking noises, and uh, we're concerned that it's a sign that it might be ready to go poof, and uh, we want to nip that in the bud before anything uh, bad happens. So just uh, be aware that there are some uh, tinkerings going on today um, after the show. So fingers crossed everything goes well and smoothly and we're back in business tomorrow as usual. Um, assuming that it works out nicely, we will of course be doing um, house tours tomorrow. I think it's Dominion's turn. I, I'm not really sure. I'm kind of a little confused because of all the different tours we've been doing. I think last week was actually supposed to be Dominion's turn and we went with all spooky houses so yeah I think we'll be picking up with Dominion this week um, but we'll see how that goes I'll, I'll sort that out uh, later today um, let me put my tweet out before I forget that is done okay so I know I might be running on a different hour time uh, for some of you um, our time has changed here so it's actually eight o'clock in the morning, my usual hour of streaming, but I think it's a little bit later for some of you um, because not everybody's time changes at the same time, which is kind of a little weird. Um, it's the same way with my folks when we try to coordinate when we're going to uh, hit up uh, together on Skype. It's a little confusing. So um, my apologies if it kind of clashes with your schedule now or if you didn't wake up in time or whatever it might be. But uh, of course, we always uh, send these videos, we export them to YouTube. So if you miss out, um, you can always catch up there. Um, I do want to say congratulations to Nexus Cupcake. Um, they had the announcement of the pumpkin carving contest yesterday evening, apparently. Um, and uh, the only one that I recognized from the Wild Star bunch uh, was Nexus. Uh, of course, congrats to all the winners of the pumpkin competition. But uh, it was really nice to actually see somebody I recognized. Um, uh, I believe uh, they won on the virtual pumpkin uh, part of it. Um, but still, it was amazing. Um, I was astounded by some of the entries, uh, both um, the real and the virtual uh, versions. I just, I just didn't have it in me this year to try and come up with a design or anything. I had so many other things going on, plus the fact that I've been sick a lot. So um, I just didn't want to overload myself with all this other stuff. So congrats to uh, Nexus Cupcake and everyone else. 
that competed and um, uh, congrats on the rewards that you have won yourselves. Um, to that end, uh, we've got uh, the housing competition, uh, the Jack Shades House of Haunts um, announcement that's going out today. According to the, uh, the tweet, it is set for, uh, I believe it's 11 a.m. PDT, whatever time that is for you. For me, I believe that's 7 p.m. this evening, CET time. So um, it, I think it's six for like Londoners, like GM uh, UKers, um, but I don't know. Just use the world buddy thing and, and figure it out what it is for your, your time zone. But um, that is supposed to go on. Uh, from what I gather, they're going to be visiting the winter plots and uh, touring those around much like they did last year. Um, I'm hoping they give some screenshots and stuff of um, some of the other entries like on their uh, official forums announcement. Uh, but um, if nothing else, at least give us the name so we can kind of go check them out. Because uh, with it being a submission through uh, screenshots and stuff directly to uh, I guess it's NC Soft or Carbide Support or whatever. Uh, nobody knows who all entered, so it would be interesting to see which ones did or didn't win and just be able to check them out ourselves if we want to. So, yeah, um, good luck to those that have entered. Um, uh, I myself didn't, um, but uh, I want to encourage those that. Uh, uh, that that did, um, you know, fingers crossed that uh, something comes of it. Um, so yeah, yesterday we had our uh, CBDC showcase for the monster themed uh, challenge. Um, it was awesome. Uh, I was blown away as I usually am with the creations you guys submit. Um, and I was kind of waffling on what to do for this month's theme. I already have December's kind of figured out. But I wasn't sure how I wanted to tie in between the two holidays. Um, but as it happens, um, we had a fellow builder put out the call for um, some contributions to their plot. And I've kind of uh, integrated myself um, and our efforts, as far as the challenges go, into their uh into their bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read you the announcement that I've put together. Um, what it is, for those of you that aren't familiar, there's uh, Green Ghost. Um, they are, uh, I think they're an avid RPer as well. So they do a lot of builds um, that uh, have backstories to them, have special purposes um, for the RPers to gather. Um, and, I think they ha are working on building a, uh, a network of plots that are, you know, in theory, connected to make this one grand uh, kind of uh, space for role players and such. Um, so this month, CBDC is going to be a special event um, in that we are working in conjunction with the Millennium City Museum and its caretaker, Green Ghost, AKA Kruja, to seek out some masterpieces um, the museum, located on Astral Girl, that's on NA Entity on Exile side, is looking to fill its walls and halls with a variety of exquisite works of art. Green wanted to help showcase fellow builders with this endeavor by inviting them to submit their creations to be put on display in the museum build. To that end, this month's challenge is to create either a painting or a sculpture all submissions, unless otherwise noted, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, um, for this challenge will be considered by the museum's caretaker, Green. Five lucky participants of this challenge will be rewarded by having their artwork put on permanent display in the Millennium City Museum. As an added bonus, one of the five works will receive a red rope display to help that contribution stand out among the rest. There's just one small catch. All submissions to this challenge must be 50 items or less. This includes picture framing, pedestals, etc. Beyond that, anything goes from materials that you use to the theme that you pick to follow along with. 
Builders may submit more than one artwork, but only one work per builder will be eligible as one of the five contributions to the museum, i.e. we're having five separate individuals will be recognized and not multiple works from the same builder. It's just my way of trying to ensure that the love is spread around to all of the builders rather than it all be uh, one particular builder that gets all the recognition. Um, while Green has already posted a thread in, with specific contact instructions for others who would like to submit artwork for their consideration, they did this in the, I believe it was the housing subforum on the official forums. Um, uh, for the purpose of this challenge, we'll be using the same method as usual, meaning the challenge is open to both regions, both factions. Just provide me with the pertinent info, uh, you know, uh, faction, character name, region, uh, what it is and where it is on the plot. Uh, make sure the plot is public and come showcase day, which should be the 29th of November, um, we'll swing by for Luxie. Um, after that, I will sub be submitting a full list of participants and their corresponding works to Green, and they will take whatever time they need to review all of the submissions and then choose five of those pieces um, that they would like to add to their museum build and decide which of the five gets the red rope treatment. Um, all the arrangements for the, you know, exchanging of the decor set codes uh, to be given to the museum for them to be able to display your work That'll be handled uh, via PM either in game um, or the official form, whichever is more convenient for those involved. Um, special note though, uh, I understand that not everyone wants to share their uh, works. Uh, it's not anything that we look down upon. We understand that there are those that want to keep it to themselves. That's perfectly fine. So uh, just want to point out that the opportunity for your work to be displayed in the museum is just an extra incentive for this month um, and not a requirement. Uh, if you would like to participate in this challenge but prefer not to have your work considered um, for the museum, just let me know and I will leave your name off of the list that I sent to Green. No problem, A-OK, -okay. um, completely understandable. Uh, again, this is just an extra kind of bonus type of incentive to get people to participate. It gives them an opportunity to um, share their works. Um, like I said, Green is just wanting to kind of showcase all of the amazing abilities that our builders of the community have. And this is their way of trying to um, do that by opening up their plot um, to other individuals and saying here, you know, I'm allotting you this amount of space give me uh, something to put there and I will, you know, what their plan is, is they're going to uh, put the name of the builder next to the work um, and all of that kind of thing. I don't know how many submissions they're going to be able to squeeze into this particular plot, but they've reserved at least five um, for this uh, little uh, challenge for this month. So I truly appreciate Green uh, working in, in conjunction with that. So that is that so uh, paintings or sculptures that's what we're looking for and again the main stipulation is the entire uh, little project the entire little decor set must be 50 items or less that is the only uh, steadfast rule now i did ask green if older works were permitted or if it had to be all new creations green said if it's something you've already made and it fits the criteria of 50 items or less that's perfect perfectly acceptable so when it comes time for you to let me know what submissions you're uh, providing or entering for this challenge um, include Older works if you want, newer works if you want, you know, either or is perfectly fine. Um, and we will take a look at all of them. That way I can give Green all of this information in one big lump sum um, rather than having, you know, because I think at first Green was willing to uh, set up um, characters on both factions, on both regions, and rather than having all of those submissions kind of spread out and have a risk of missing somebody's submission, it's better that you just send all that info to me and then I will just send it all in one big mail to, uh, to Green 
uh, for them to peruse and uh, check it all out. Um, again, we're going to be doing the live stream tour of all of these things, and we'll be doing screenshots. And of course, they're going to be getting all of your character names and such, so that if they want to go in person and take a look at these things, um, that will be possible. They can have all the info at hand and make uh, their decision based off of that. Um, I do know that you won't have to worry about, like, you know, sometimes with the paintings, if it goes on a, like a, a custom built wall, maybe the wall's not really thick and you have to worry about what's sticking out behind. Um, I think the idea is they're setting up the bunker house and um, using the, the uh, prefab walls there. Uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, what's, you know, how much junk is sticking out the back. Um, and we'll go over that a little more uh, in a little bit. But um, you don't have to worry about that. They will size it, position it however they need to, to make sure that it's just your uh, work that's being displayed. So um, again, thank you to Green Ghost for uh hooking up with this this way, allowing me to kind of step in on their quest for um, uh, museum exhibits. Um, but I think it's going to be um, a really interesting challenge because uh, I guarantee you, ever since we talked, I've been mulling over ideas of, you know, what I could put together. I've already checked a lot of the things that I've put together in the past, and most of them are like in the hundreds. And um, so definitely above the limit. Good morning, Faye. Good morning, Poi, Bones, anyone else that happens to be lurking around. Um, just to recap, uh, this month's theme is uh, going to be in conjunction with um, the, uh, uh, what's it called? I forgot. The Millennium City Museum, um, Kruja, aka Green Ghost, um, has put out a call for builders to submit works of art, be it paintings or sculptures, um, to fill their museum with um, to kind of showcase fellow builders and their creativity. Um, and I kind of intruded and said, hey, can we set that up as part of our um, our challenge this month and they were very gracious in saying yes please do this it sounds like a great idea so that's the challenge this this month to create either a painting or a sculpture again any theme any you know obviously you want to keep the size uh, you know relative you don't want to go too big or too small but um, it's going to be one of those things where uh, anything's allowed. Um, obviously, you want to kind of keep it in good taste. Um, but uh, the main rule is it has to be 50 items or less. Um, I know with a lot of us that do the paintings and stuff, that can be pretty uh, intimidating because once you start getting into the details, uh, all those little pieces really quickly add up. Um, especially if you're doing a lot of fancy framework, um, that eats away at the amount and the 50 items or less includes any frames, any pedestals that you put your statue on top of or whatever. Um, so keep that in mind and uh, hopefully um, we have at least a few entries. I'm looking for a minimum of five because um, uh, Green's... Uh, graciously offered to um, include five creations from our submissions from this challenge. Um, I'm hoping that it's five different builders, obviously, because um, I put that little stipulation in that if you submit multiple works, um, say we have uh, seven people submit works and uh, one of them submits five different types of things, I don't want all five to be just theirs. I want it to be spread amongst uh, a lot of builders. So it's going to be five builders get something of theirs uh, picked. So uh, hopefully we have at least a few that um, take the time to give this a try. Um, the only example I could come up with that I've actually built in the past that probably would work is this particular sculpture here. I don't even know what this thing is. I think it's a flower, a palm tree. I'm not really sure. 
it's I had a lot of extra bones on hand uh, from the Arcterus stuff. I'd been doing a lot of the dailies and going through the zone regularly, and I just ended up with a pile of bones, and I wanted something. I needed something for this little part display, so I decided to put this together. And it just so happens this is this is I think it's 39 pieces of what it come up to, and that includes again the pedestal and the little uh, plaque that's on the front. So this technically would um, fit the criteria. It's under 50 items. Um, it might not be necessarily easy items to get a hold of. Um, that. Green didn't say anything about restrictions as far as, you know, things that cost renown or things that are um, incredibly hard to get a hold of. Uh, so, you know, if you want to make it easy on green, stick with things that are readily available. Um, but um, maybe the hue, they will work in conjunction, like say if you're on uh, entity side as well. Um, maybe you can help them collect some of the, the items that they would need to put your artwork on display, that kind of thing. Um, but other than that, um, they weren't any more specific about uh, special rules or anything. It was mostly just they wanted to make sure that each uh, builder was given just the 50 uh, items. Because, of course, if they're wanting to showcase a multitude of uh, builders' works, um, they have to really kind of be tight about the allotment because you know, 50 here, 50 there, 50, it adds up really, really fast. So, And they still want to leave plenty of room for like the red rope treatment that they're going to give one of the um, submissions. Plus, they want to be able to write the name of the builder. Um, so that's a lot of decor right there. Um, not to mention the, the building, the museum itself. Uh, so... Yeah, it's going to be pretty, uh, I, I don't uh, envy them in trying to get all that to work um, and still, you know, uh, I don't know, be as easily, <laughs> I don't know how to, to, to phrase it. Um, but uh, again, I, I appreciate them opening their, their plot for this purpose. Um, We've seen a few others do that in the past. I think uh, uh, one of my guildmates, they did that with their pirate plot. They allowed um, some of us former guildmates to come and decorate a specific section. Some of us went a little bit more on the wild side because they didn't give us actual limits to how much we were able to use. Um, so this, again, is going to be a good challenge. Uh, because I myself know that when I go to make a, either a sculpture or a painting, I just kind of build it however I want to build it. I don't really take the amount of items that's going into it into consideration. At the end, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many pieces. It's like, you know, close to 200. Um, but uh, now you're going to have to pay close attention to that amount and uh, try and produce something that's still as interesting and intricate as you can, but within that 50 item limit. So again, this is one example. This is a, a sculpture. It's I think it's 39 items. So you can see it's, even if I wanted to add to it, I wouldn't have too much room to play around with it. I might could add some kind of a, a topper to it. Um, I, I don't know what else I would put on it, but um, you can see it's fairly simple, um, It's, but it's also, I guess, kind of interesting. Again, I don't even know what it's really supposed to be. It's just something I put together. I like the way the, the claws looked kind of fanned out like that. Uh, maybe you want to flip it the other way, or, or I don't know. But um, like I said, most of the paintings I have are well over 100 each, so none of those really qualify. So we're going to have to make a new one today. So we're going to visit Dill's place, and we're going to see if we can put together something. So the first thing I thought about is um, a lot of uh, the things I've done in the past have used some rather uh, item-hungry uh, framework um, like the books you know they're only so uh, long 
the spine, so you have to use multiples to get all the way around uh, the framework. Um, the layered glass, that's a big problem. Uh, a lot of that is like 20 plus uh, pieces to get that layered glass. Um, if you're going to go with a, a white background with the thing. So with the, the Halloween, the Shades Eve um, paintings that we did using just the uh, the gear trophy, that's a nice cheat to get a white background but not have to worry about the glass. So that's that's one way of cutting corners. You'd reduce that 25 layers to just one. So that saves you some because 25, that's already half of your allotment there. So that's, you know, you definitely don't want to go with the glass. Um, as far as the framework, um, if you use walls or books or um, uh, two by fours, metal planks, all of those, you're going to have at least a minimum of four pieces. Um, so my idea was focus on things that you could use as a frame that just takes a single piece to make the frame. So for instance, in this one, I'm using the fireworks crate. Um, it's one piece and that gives you the full framework. You see it's nice, uh, nice shape, looks like a picture frame. So it will work nicely, I think. Um, that's the one we're going to use. And then for the background, I just use a single um, Orin wall. Uh, you could use other things. Again, you're going to have to think about um, the frame shape will determine the shape of the background that you can get away with. Like if you decide to use, um, say, uh, a round, uh, trying to think, like say you use the uh, the trough, I think is what it is, or a round picture frame. You could do it like this, and that will give you a round one, but then that means anything that you're using for the background color, it too will need to be either round or you're going to be piecing it several pieces to get that round look. Um, I wouldn't use this one because obviously that's perfectly flat, so you wouldn't be able to use that part, but it, it could work this way. Um, and what we're going to do for this month, my objective is going to be coming up with as many ways of um, using uh, items as frames that only takes one item for the frame um, that you guys can uh, possibly use. I'm also going to be looking at different combinations like um, uh, say you want to do one of like a sunset painting, um, probably the the air conditioner would work uh, to get that square. Now again, I don't know if the air conditioner actually makes noise, but if it does, then you know you want to take that into consideration. I, I think I used the lighter in the past for my sunset painting. But, um, you know, we will be looking at all types of things that you might can use that will fit that particular frame. So, like uh, you can see, this one's going to be really close. You see, it's not quite the right length, so we keep bumping it up. You might have things sticking out where you don't want, so you just make adjustments and hope that you can get it. Nice and straight. There we have a nice yellow background. So if you're wanting to do a beach scene, a sunset type of thing for a forest uh, or mountainside or hillside kind of thing that would work uh, really well. Um, there's other um, types of square backgrounds or rectangle shapes that you could probably find. There's the, um, the uh, posters 
Um, the only thing about the posters you might want to uh, think about uh, is there is that line uh, right in the center that maybe you can work into being your horizon line in whatever, you know, if you're doing like a nighttime uh, scene or something. Um, or if you're just doing uh, some kind of a, a portrait or something, you know, with the paintings, we've done both. We've done ones where we've actually worked up the whole uh, background, foreground, and then the main subject. And then others, we've just done the subject like, um, oh, for example, let me just go through a few. None of these are really good examples as far as the core limits, but I want to give um, uh, examples of what I'm talking about as far as uh, just the subject itself and then actually going through with decorating up the background. Um, I think leaving out the background would probably be easiest for most because then you can focus all of your detail in the actual um, subject matter and rather than having to worry about light uh, for the, the sky, uh, a dark color for the ground, that kind of thing. So we have those that, um, like this, this is a good example. It's mostly just a subject on a, a plain uh, single color background. That way you can focus most of this here. I guess these would probably work as uh, submissions. I don't think there are 30 pieces. I didn't even, I completely forgot about the birds. But uh, this is probably a good example of one that would work for the submission. It's, uh, I don't even know how many pieces. Let me see if I can see how much that is. Let's, uh, I think I started a painting thing. Yeah. Bird. Well, actually, let's put this on. Where's carrot? And that one with even the multiple uh, domes for the framework, that all together is 17 pieces. So that's well under the limit. You can see how simple it is. It's, you know, mostly just the bird itself. Um, so it should be pretty fun to work with it back, like that. When you get into something a little bit more complex where you're actually working with um, the sky, the ground, the trees, and all that like this, that's a little overboard. Um, not to mention I'm using layered glass in this particular one, but um, which I think was like 25 pieces together. You can see that the framework itself is multiple pieces, so that's going to eat it up. I can guarantee you there's like a ton of um, bramble bushes here. You can see there's at least uh, half a dozen or more um, pine trees. Then you got all the stones and the icicles for the waterfall. There's a lot of detail and it's, it's nice looking, but it's just way too much. Um, let's see if I can change this to... Well, let's just clear this. This particular one, that's 108 pieces. So it's like double what it should be for this particular challenge. So definitely can't go that fancy. Um, even this one, um, as simple as it looks, that's, I think it was 90 something uh, when I last checked. So I think something where the object itself is more focus of the, the picture. You know, these little simplified little bunny rabbits and stuff will be more um, in the range. Uh, obviously, the more detailed you become, I, I think this probably pushes the limit well over uh, because of the pieces that I had to use. But, you know, something like this, I think that would probably fit. Um, but definitely like the birds, and things uh, that should work um, for you a lot easier. Now, uh, it's like this one. This one was by um, Flower. Uh, all of those individual stars for the sky, that's probably what eats up most of the decor there. So 
just keep it in mind. Remember to regularly check your progress as you're building to see about how many pieces you have left. Um, if you're going to participate in this challenge, um, experiment, uh, try different backgrounds, try different frameworks. Uh, a lot of that will determine on how um, it looks in the end. Um, maybe you don't want to go with the traditional square around. Maybe you want to do a triangle frame for whatever reason, or uh, an octagon shape or hexagon or something, uh, something unusual. Uh, you could even do um, using maybe some, if you have a, a fairly uh, non-complicated uh, focus of your your art but and you have a little extra that you can spend on the frame maybe do a kind of like an amoeba shape with um, the um, the hover part pieces to make it look a little interesting and different um, there's a lot of ways you can go but I'm going more simple um, so I have my background I have my frame so it's just two pieces so we started off very basic most of it's going to go to the subject itself. Um, and what I decided I was going to try is um, I did the butterfree uh, butterfly Pokemon thing um, for a challenge a while back. And it got me to wondering how easy it would be to do butterflies. Now I've done a few in the past before. Um, they were all fairly simple, but I wanted to see if I could make a more intricate looking one, but still within the limit. Um, so Mostly yesterday, uh, the few times that I hopped on, I've been just kind of going through all of the pieces. I went through every single piece that's available on the housing vendor, looking for items that I thought I might could use. Um, with the butterfly, you know, there's a recognizable shape usually um, with the, how the wings are displayed, uh, the, the repeated patterns uh, from wing to wing. And uh, one of the problems I had with um, like the Butterfree, it's not like uh, the the items that I use to, to draw the wings um, on one side, it's not like I could just flip it, you know, link that whole wing together and then flip it and have it perfectly mirrored. I had to make each side separately um, from scratch. That was pretty complicated. So I was looking for something that I could use that might be easier to replicate for both. So the thing I saw was um, the Draken Gong. Now, obviously, it's got a lot of extra bits that I more than likely don't want to use. But I'm hoping I can... Um, Still figure out a way to use this in here. First, I'm trying to get this lined up nicely so I can uh, turn it like I want. It almost reminds me of like a turtle shell. So if you're wanting to do a turtle, this might be the item for you. But uh, mostly, I want. Um, at least part of this big, I don't know what you call it, medallion thing showing. And I think that will make a nice little wing part. Notice I have bits sticking out here, so that's probably going to be a problem. But I'm hoping that we can kind of work around it. Idea is I just want that one part showing without all the extra junk. And I want to get as much of that um, dark outline showing because I think that'll be the nice little trim around the wings.
something like that. Now I may decide that this particular background doesn't really work with the coloring of these, uh, this butterfly, but notice I'm checking to see how high I can take this. Because again, I'm going to have to be worried about those extra parts showing that I don't want. And now that I have it selected and placed like I want, then I can go around and, and twiddle with it, see if I can make a nice little wing. this one a little smaller. Maybe it turns into a flower. Maybe it doesn't look like a, a, a butterfly to some. Now, I'm often uh, kind of a stickler about, uh, I like trying to use the same item for a particular thing if I can, um, and I'm probably going to try and do that uh, with this as well. So we've got that little piece kind of dangling up. What I might do is turn this a little bit more so we've got just that one bit. don't think I'm going to get away with being able to do it flipping it the one way so I'm going to have to try and see if I can do it. If it doesn't work then I'll try something else. It's just a matter of tinkering with it seeing if you can get it to line up like you want. Again, um, Green said you guys don't have to worry about what might be sticking in or out of the back. So while I have this huge box sticking out, if it was like a faux wall or a, you know, not a faux wall, but a custom wall, um, they won't have to worry about thickening it up to hide the box. Because it's going to be right up against the wall here. <clears throat> We need some kind of a solid part for the body there. Oops. Again.
just use the chain itself. I don't know. I'm not really sure what a butterfly looks like. Thicker in the middle, I guess. I don't know if the body goes all the way from the front to the back or I don't know, his, his front wings look really stunted or something. They don't look long enough. a little better. See what I mean by just the slightest adjustments can change the look of it. Now his body looks too long. Here. Yeah, something like that. It's not quite what I'm looking for, but you get the idea. So as far as other things to use for like if you're wanting to do a butterfly, um, again, I was looking at uh, rounded things. Um, maybe some of the windows would work. Um, I don't know what kind of windows I might have on hand. Yeah, I don't think any of those will work at all. But I know, uh, well, I think most butterflies have like a, some kind of a trim around the edges. Uh, I know a lot of them have actual divisions in their uh, of colorings, um, but I think if you're going to go like like that with outlining all of those sections, like I did with the butterfly, you're going to end up eating up your uh, decor count too fast. Um, so I definitely wouldn't recommend that. I would look for um, things that you can use. Um, like the gong that already has a kind of pattern on it, like say, um, like the round rug, that would probably work okay as a, a butterfly type of design. Uh, maybe the Draken rugs as well, if you're looking for a wild looking one. Um, I think these would probably work really well too because they have that nice little trim on the edge, but again, it's kind of pricey. 
going to cost you a chunk of renown to you know put in several of those. <clears throat> this one I don't think would work because it's not rounded. So it doesn't mean it's not possible. I'm sure there's somebody that can figure out how to, to use it, but um, I think it would not be as easy. So like... Uh, Again, you're looking for something that has a pattern already and then you could use it uh, in multiples just to get that funny little shape that you need. That saves you having to kind of come up with that design yourself. Now, I'm not saying it's not possible to do it. Um, maybe you can find an item that has that outline that you can use multiple ways like um, I don't know maybe even this box shape uh, having it um, finding some way to make a a pattern with it so that it's got all these outlines like do a simple one like this bring this down so you get better Now you have several divisions here, and then um, find ways to fill up those divisions with different colors in a, a nice symmetrical pattern. That would be the best way, I think, to try and make a pattern that you would fill in, you know, like a well, like a paint by numbers kind of thing. It's just you might have trouble finding items that fit in those particular shapes without having to use multiples of them. If that makes sense. So like here. You, you want to overlap it, you know, more uniformly than what I've got here. But then, okay, say you want, um, I don't know. Maybe you turn it even again so that you have a little bit of an outline right here. So now you have a little bit of a division to give that trim. Maybe you want all of this to be black or black and black and then a little bit of white. Then you have to find items to fill those little blocks up. Um, that would be the only way I can think of to do it that way rather than how I did it with like the Butterfree. The Butterfree I used lots of um, hanging cables and the edges of uh, the bottoms of the vent tanks to get all of that shape thing. And it was just a lot, a ton of the core for that thing. I think it was well over 200 when it was all said and done. That's why I figure if you're doing uh, butterflies flowers, um, that kind of thing, finding a pre-patterned item to use in a way that you might can manipulate a little better. I think that works best. Just add some antennas, a little bit of a chunky body and you're good to go. Um, as far as um, a few other ideas for today for um, some of the frames, again, oops, 
the trough is, would probably be good for a round um, or multiples of the the dome. Uh, oops. Yep. The reason I say the feeding trough would probably be a one way to start is because it is uh, pretty thick on its own. It does have some gaps, so you might have to use two to, to make it full up. But uh, it's an interesting shape, for one. So what I would do is I would probably double it all up like that. You could just use the domes, the hollow domes. The issue with these is, again, like say we use it the same size as this one, um, right about the right size. Now see the difference in thickness. That means if you have anything that's even remotely close to the frame, it's going to likely be sticking out. You're going to have trouble with that, especially for um, filling up the back, unless you use another dome to give the background for it. Um, but even still, I think a lot of the objects you might be using, unless you concentrated in the center, um, has a risk of popping out on the side. So that's why, like with the birds, I use multiple layers of these. And that you just uh, place a duplicate. Um, this is at 31, so you go like maybe 29. Well, maybe 30. And that will be just slightly, and just keep doing that until you get the thickness that you want. Maybe two will be enough. Maybe you need three. Just keep that in mind. Um, three as opposed to two, you know, they'll probably take three to get the same thickness as this. Um, but like, again, your framework, you got your woods, you've got metals, this one looks almost like um, not quite a golden type, but it's nice and brighter, uh, a lot brighter than this part here, these woods. Um, you can actually take uh, the actual picture frames that we have. Um, comes with their own nail and, and string and just uh, cover up what's already there. We've seen lots of people do that or just accent it with things um, like um, I think it was it was either a uni or um, flower that had the reclining woman and they gave her some other clothes. She looked like carnival outfit. Um, the Hugel portrait is a, a big fave because it's a little bit inset so it's easier to kind of cover it up and then just give it a new something inside it. Um, you could actually use the Hugel portrait um, in a way that, for example, here. Let's see if I can get out of the hole here. This is basically two Hugel portraits, one front and one to the back, and I've just resized it slightly so that it's all golden. Um, ignore the face. I've been working on that for ages now. I'm still not happy with it, but it's just an example of how you can use the same item. Yeah, it's two pieces to make the frame, but you also took care of the background. That's great for uh, silhouetted portraits if you're going to do those, um, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, a lot of the containers will make good uh, frameworks. Um, look in the container section. Cardboard box, the open one, probably would work if you're really looking for something. Again, it probably depends on the colors that you're looking for. Um, the golden chest, uh, the bottom of it makes a good background. Again, if you're looking for a golden um, bit, 
That's a nice one. It's a little bit narrow in the center, so that might pose a problem depending on the size of your framework. Um, this one, while it looks at first glance a good idea for a framework, it is a little crooked. Um, but again, depending on your theme, maybe you're making something that kind of looks like those the sad portrait and stuff where the frame is a little wonky uh, and the picture itself is a little too. So maybe that works to your advantage. I don't know. Um, the steel framed, um, it can be interesting. Uh, you turn it. It has an interesting little frame. Not very thick though, so um, again, it might not be ideal. It just really depends on what you're putting in. Um, if you're doing a full-on painting or if you're just having a single subject matter kind of thing. Um, standing chest might be another one. I think we've seen a few use that. Uh, this is, makes a good framework if you're doing just uh, a silhouette type of thing. Top of it, the bottom also is good. Because again, they already look like little frames, golden frames. Works nice. Uh, let's see, what's another good section to look through? Books, uh, those make good backgrounds. Um, like, for instance, I decided to change, um, say I decided to change the color of this. I wanted a darker blue. Um, this one would make a good. The only thing is, uh, like if you get it the right size, you're likely going to have part of the spine showing. But that might work to your advantage again, using that as a horizon line of some sort. Maybe it's a table. Maybe it's the floor and this back area is the wall. And you have a, like a door, like an indoor scene kind of thing some windows or whatever, an old lady rocking in a chair, who knows, but um, that's a, the books are nice. The yellow is a good one, um, the blue one, uh, brown ones, usually I use those for the frames, but uh, still a possibility. Cabinets and dressers, probably another good source of uh, frames if you want. Uh, it kind of probably depends on uh, what, again, what it is you're doing. Like you might actually use this now. Understand this is a little. See if I can. The top of it is a little bowed. I know that for sure. So like if you want to use that as the frame, your picture would actually be out past the, the, the frame itself because it's not inset, this part here. Um, but it still might be a fun item to use. This depends. Uh, okay. Again, this could be used for a nice portrait of some kind. Add a little bit of a plaque thing here. You know, it's any number of ways you could do it. Uh, some of the statues, they have some nice surfaces if you're looking for um, like striations or something in your background, like the um, the uh, cellar entrance that we used for the haunted house painting that we did on another plot. Uh, 
I ended up, I think, mostly covering it up with stuff, but um, you never know what you might use it for if you decide that it looks interesting enough. Um, but some of those, I think like the Dominion bed. I don't know if I have one of those here. Ah. No, I don't. This might make an interesting frame. It's rather expensive, obviously, but the shape is fun. Maybe you end up making an eye with it and it looks like an eye shape to me. Um, that reminds me the uh, mounted uh, with the buffalo moose back of it. Some interesting weird shape to it, but like the, um, oh, the ones with like the, uh, the bus, there we go. These have some interesting like little shield. It's the same thing I use for like the bunny paintings. Um, use those as just like a, a maybe you want to make a family crest or uh, something along those lines. That's what these look like to me that they would be good for. Um, there's just a lot of different, typically you want to look for something that's flat or has a little bit of a lip on it. Um, the bowls are a good example of some round frames that you might like. Again, I would use multiples to get that, but maybe you like the, the sided shape that it has. Um, maybe you want to make it more round. Make a nice little sunflower or something in it. Um, But notice how all of them have different colorings. Again, that's going to play a role into what you decide to pick. Do you want silver? Do you want wood? Do you want gold? Just a dark metal kind of thing. Lots of rounds and ovals and such. Um, this one's a good one. It's a little, like just very slightly inset. Um, or you can use this, this one's frame. The tree's another good one. The only thing about the tree, and I think the landscape one as well, they do have a bit of a, a bubble of glass over it. Um, I don't know if I can show what I'm talking about here. how there's a little bit of weird coloring that's because there's a bit of a bowed piece of glass covering it um, so that may or may not cause problems if you can somehow keep your painting or whatever behind it um, that would probably work I think the best example of using an existing picture that I have is uh, I think it's on Lily's plot Was the um, 
think it's the Valentine one. No, nope, not this one. It must be Ginger then. I used an existing frame and I just covered it up with my own stuff. Uh, for some, they might feel like that's cheating because they didn't custom the, uh, the frame too. But, uh, well, like this is an example, um, the love picture. That's an existing frame. It's just the portrait profile. Well, it's all connected, but the one with the, the guy with the hat, and looks like he's like a little business guy. Um, and I just covered it up. Uh, but it's the same here. I'm using that uh, picture tree. There it is there. But I've basically covered it up. I used, um, I kept the the trim of it because I like the little flowers or whatever that that is there, and then I just put a poster on top of it to hide it, and then I put the little teddy bear in there. So um, that kind of lessens the problem of you dealing with the frame itself. Again, any way you can kind of scrimp on using as few pieces for the framework, pedestals. All of that. We'll talk about pedestals probably tomorrow, um, assuming that everything goes well. But for the framework, definitely go with um, uh, anything that has the, the shape that you're looking for, whether it be a square, rectangle, circle, oval, um, already set so that you don't have to use several pieces to build it because um, that will give you more allowance for the actual subject matter of the painting. Um, to uh, put as much detail as you can on that. So I think uh, that's it for today, guys. Um, I know it's not a, a really long one, and we didn't really do much building, but um, mostly I just wanted to get the announcement out there. Um, I'm going to be tweeting it. I'm also going to be posting in the forum. So if you want to recap over the, the rules of this particular challenge this month, um, you can look it up again there. Um, but just to recap quickly, uh, we're looking for paintings uh, or sculptures. You can do multiples if you want to do a painting and a sculpture or a couple of paintings and one sculpture or vice versa. That's, um, uh, oh yes, I got to change that. <laughs> well, I always change it after because I usually wait till the, the video, um, I mean, until I actually make the tweet. Um, so. The, the, the forum post before I update it. So I will do that um, as soon as we're done here, boy. But thank you again for that. Um, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, it can be a painting, sculpture. The main criteria is it must be 50 items or less, and that includes the frame, if it's a painting, or a pedestal, or whatever kind of stand you might put it on, if it's a sculpture. Um, or statue or whatever, um, as long as it's all together, 50 items or less, that's what we're looking for. Um, it's, it's critical that it remain within that cap because that's strictly the um, uh, allotment that each individual will be given um, to showcase the work at the Millennium City Museum uh, build. Um, again, this is in conjunction with uh, Green Ghosts. Um, they're opening their plot um, in a way that they want to showcase other people's works. So they're asking for those to donate or submit their work for consideration. Um, and I've hopped in on it and they were uh, kind enough to say that they will allow five of the works that come out of this uh, challenge this month to be included in uh, their museum display. So. Um, a really big uh, nod to those that have put in all of this time and effort um, into creating these beautiful works and having a special place for them to um, be seen, um, especially if you're on Javit's side and you 
maybe don't get as much re recognition on the other side of the pond, this will be a chance for those on in, in a side to see some of your work. So um, I think it's a really fun thing. And of course, uh, not only will five of our um, participants um, have a piece of their work um, included in the museum, but one of those five will have a special kind of like red rope treatment they're going to have. Um, I guess it's going to be cordoned off or specially noted in some way. And of course, everybody's contributions will have their name uh, next to their uh, artwork so that people will know who did what. And uh, I'm sure as time goes on and more contributions come in and screenshots get taken and all that, um, Green will be posting that in that special thread that they set up. So it should be exciting. Um, I hope um, you guys uh, find this um, not too hard of a challenge. Uh, you can see it's going to take some thought and consideration on what items you use, how much detail you give, um, even uh, basic things like the framework and all of that, just how simple or complicated you want to go for each part. But um, I'm hoping that it will produce some really fun and interesting works. Um, I look forward to it. I hope you do too. Um, in the meantime, um, again, all things going well, we should be back tomorrow for tours. So I guess it'll be Thursday that we do the pedestal part of this um, challenge discussion. But um, I will work to um, come up with some ideas that I can work on that you can follow along with and hopefully, um, again, continue brainstorming to give you more ideas about things that you can use for certain effects or uh, whatever that it might be that you could use it for your particular entry. So until then, um, have fun uh, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.